Hi, I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two curious ladies on an adventure to learn more about cooking, cannabis, and the fine art of gluttony. Join us every 10 days or so as we get high and make our way through a recipe. Step inside and let the consumption begin. <laughs> How are you, Becca? <laughs> they said confidently. I am not fine. <laughs> We, I was a little cranky this morning when we first started. We both were a little cranky. Usually it's just one and we can work through it. In, but both <laughs> of us, man, well, we're doing our best. <laughs> but I think what we're making today and what we're drinking today and what we're smoking today is going to get us through this. I know it is because we're making actually one of Gretchen's most favorite things of all time and something I've never made really ever so <laughs> this is very exciting <laughs> never invested the time to produce on your own in your home exactly because we're doing steamed artichokes it's going to be fantastic we've got a lot to cover which means we're going to hit the ground running a little bit we're going to start off in the kitchen with some action stuff Gretchen's going to teach me how to clean an artichoke, then we're going to get them steaming. But before then, we're also aiding our moods with some smokes. So what is going on on your side over there, Gretchen? Oh, I have this delightful new weed that I'm smoking that I bought was a label buy, as you know, I like to do. It's called Sunny Melons. Half because I don't know why it just makes me think of breasts in the sunshine. So sunny melons, but I think it's supposed to be referring to the fruit more than boobs. Yeah. Boobs. <laughs> Who doesn't love boobs? <laughs> I love boobs. Right? Boobs are great. I lo- yeah. really love my boobs. Yeah. Mostly. I haven't had a lot of other boobs to like experiment with, but. It's fair. Yeah. So sunny melons. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, what am I talking about? Why are talking about this? <laughs> I partook a little bit before the recording and this might not be great, but so far I'm liking it. It does say this is a hybrid. It's 26% THC. You can expect sunshine to deliver blissful, happy, uplifting effects, even on the darkest days. This strain offers fruity citrus flavors with tropical undertones. Made for you. Made for, especially for today. It has has lightened my mood significantly. (laughs) Yeah. And it's a little gloomy over there, right? It's it's kind of a cloudy day. So even on the darkest days. Yeah, it is going to be gloomy probably until Thursday of this week. And it is Saturday now. And yeah. I'm not in a great mood. So this is going to be, this is going to be great. I'm going to have this bead and I'm going to power fucking through and it's going to be my sunshine every day. That's right. You hold on to your melons and keep going. Hold on to your melons. (laughs) Hold on to your melons and get out into the sunshine. (laughs) Anyway, that's enough about me, boobs, and my weed. Let's find out what Becca's smoking today and what you have to say about it. Going with that tropical note that you have, I'm enjoying some pineapple Fanta, which also is funny thinking about a pineapple because it kind of looks like an artichoke. Very spiky. Yeah. Similar. Like, yeah, Yeah. almost seems like they could be related on some planet somewhere, but not at all. Not this one. Not this time. (laughs) But it's got some beta caryophylline, terpenaline, osamine, and 22% THC. I'm excited about this one. I usually tend to go more towards lemonine heavy terpenes. I'm enjoying the beta caryophylline. It smells good. It's feeling relaxing. A good balance to my crankiness. Like you said, you've got your melons and I've got my pineapples and we are cruising through this. We're also drinking something citrusy and fun. We've got lemon drops today. This was a fun thing to make. I did like it. Of course, I love anything with a rim, but it's a sugar rim. And they were putting a whole ounce of simple syrup in this drink, too. And I just I couldn't get on board with all of that. So I did modify my lemon drop to be just a tiny bit of sugar that I tossed in there. I used some super fine because I did not want to make simple syrup. But Becca went above and beyond and did the simple syrup. So (laughs) I did. I did. 
I, the one time I was like, well, for sure Gretchen will have simple syrup. I better make it. And she's like, yeah, I didn't do it. <laughs> no, I'm grumpy today. I know. No, I, I can't do that now. But this recipe comes from liquor.com. It's pretty classic lemon drop, two ounces vodka, one half ounce triple sec, one ounce lemon juice freshly squeezed, one ounce simple syrup, simple syrup and a sugar rim. Like Gretchen said, you just mix all those up and put it into a shaker with ice and then enjoy, which I am. So we've got our drinks. We've got our smokes. We're going to head into the kitchen where, like we said, Gretchen's going to talk me through what it means to clean an artichoke, what it looks like to get it steaming, like to start it steaming. And we also did a little bit of improvising with my steamer basket, which we'll talk <laughs> about too. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to talk about that at length. We had to have a whole yeah. like half hour <laughs> puzzle experiment time to figure out what the fuck we were going to do about your steamer. I know, right? So hopefully it works. And then this can be a trick for anyone. But we're going to get those going, get those steaming, and then sit back down and chat a little bit about the glorious artichoke. And then we'll go from there. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's do it. And we are in the kitchen. My steamer is going full ahead. Becca did not cooperate quite as well and is not going, but that's fine. We have a few minutes. I turned mine even to a lower temperature than it was on before. I'm getting ready to clean my artichoke and Becca is ready to attempt her first artichoke cleaning of all time. Yeah. We're not following a recipe for this. Gretchen's cooked these so many times. We're just doing it because, I mean, she knows what to do. So there's no real <laughs> recipe. Which, unfortunately, threw Becca for a little bit of a loop because... <laughs> what do I do? You're like, ah! <laughs> like, I, I need a recipe. I need every step right now. But I am ready to learn. And like we said, this is the first time I'm doing this. What world level would you say it is for someone like me who's never prepped a, a real live full artichoke? See, this now puts a whole debate in my head because I was like, this is a world level one because I've been an artichoke person my entire life. I know the game. I'm surprised, right? <laughs> I love and, our various, our different levels here. You're yeah. like, yep, you went in my sleep. And I'm like, where, what do I do? <laughs> I feel like it's really weird to be somebody from the Midwest who is this into artichokes. I don't feel like this is a normal thing. I loved artichokes from being a very young child. I don't know if that's normal or really fucking weird. I mean, I only had canned artichokes, really, until I moved to California for college. Surprising. Yeah. <laughs> kind yeah. of blows my but mind. But now, I, I mean, they're here. They're in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I, I got one. <laughs> we had no problem getting them in Michigan. Like, that's mm -hmm. not the problem. We all, like, I was always able to find them. It's not like it was a scarce or rare thing. I don't feel like it was something that I had a lot of people in my life that knew or were as obsessed with artichokes as I was. <laughs> For sure. I could see that. And they're intimidating. They look intimidating. It's hard to figure out how to get to where you need to get to and where do you start. So right. <laughs> I'm very excited to have you talk me through this. I do have to point out that I was doing a demonstration for you earlier and you pointed something out that I cannot believe I've never contemplated in my life <laughs> like really it's shameful absolutely shameful but I never thought maybe I should cut the artichoke in half top to bottom and then trim the leaves off <laughs> don't try and trim the thing while it's in a round shape <laughs> so yeah we're always learning around here <laughs> always it's a lifelong process everybody I'm holding my artichoke Stem in hand, talk me through this. Step one, I usually pull any of the tiny little leaves that are on the stem off, mostly just because they bother me. But <laughs> if you're going to grill it or something like that later, those, because they're hanging off like that, can catch fire. So it's kind oh. of a good, it's a good practice. <laughs> Might as well. Then I'm going to trim off the bottom part of the stem. This is really based on preference. So if you want a longer stem, you can just trim the very driest part, you know, just 
and mostly this is just because it looks ugly. And so I'll cut that off. So you cut that off kind of the way you would cut off a broccoli stem or an asparagus stem. Yes. Okay. Nothing, tough nothing side. unusual about this. No, no, but that's tough to cut through. These are, yeah. these are thick and fibrous. They are an armored vegetable. Like, <laughs> yeah, like artichokes are probably one of the easiest vegetables to ship. They are, yeah, armored vegetables. They're very tough. You throw them around. I like using a serrated knife on an artichoke. This is my personal preference. If you have a really sharp chef's knife, this will also work. But because I cannot always apply, apply the amount of force required to get through something like this, having something with a serrated edge that can give me, help me get a little leverage is a good tool for me. So we're going to go on. If you consider the artichoke as a north-south concept, we're going to cut stem, along. Stem is the south. Stem is the south. Okay. The butt is the north. It's going to slice straight in half. Beautiful. Next step, we are going to trim the tops of the leaves off. Chop off like the top third of our globe here. If we're going to keep on with that metaphor. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Mine are globe artichokes, so it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to take a half a lemon I have over here and just rub it on the cut surfaces since it's already starting to brown a little bit. And you How said it's not a bad thing. It's it's just the color changing. It's not going to make it taste different. It's just aesthetically yeah. preferable to not have it be so dark. Exactly, yes. It just looks gross. The brown yeah. just looks gross. My second half, I'm going to chop my top third off. Oh my God, I'm doing it the wrong way. <laughs> that is wrong with me. And I can go in your compost. My compost is very full right now. So we've cut the North Pole off. We've now got these beautiful halves facing us, the inside of the artichoke there. So what's the next step? We have to scoop out the, the fuzzy little choke in the center. And we will take some of these inner leaves as well because they're just not great eating. They have a lot of pokey little ends on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll see a pretty clear line of where the fuzzy part of the choke stops. And you'll insert a spoon or something along that line. I usually find I can do it pretty easily with a spoon. It's not particularly firm at that part. It's also meant to come apart there. So that might be part of it. <laughs> That's helpful. We'll discuss that later uh, when we talk about our jokes. And There's a lot so, of these little things. Little, uh, the little hairs, the little stamens. They're like part of the stamen. They're part... I'm a little unclear on the biology part of the interior here, but we'll talk about that again a little bit later. I'll try not to get into it now. So these are ready to go in. <laughs> wow. Okay. I am not done getting all these guys out. Yet. Okay. You are you <laughs> so uh, well practiced uh, at this. As, as, as we said, I'm a pro. Mm -hmm. I did, I did go to culinary experts. school. So, you know. <laughs> like a private master class. Yeah. For you, and then we publish it, and then it's for everybody else. And it's free. So. Yeah, you're welcome. Some of my little stamens, little fibery guys, little wispies, got into the leaves a bit. Is that fine? It's okay. Yeah. If you want to just rinse them off, sometimes I'll just rinse them off a little bit right before I put them in the water just to rinse off the last few hairs. I'm going much faster on my second half. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Now I get it. <laughs> Are you, is your water going, steaming, boiling, something? Yeah. Yep. It's Lots steaming. of steam happening. We're ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're ready. We're to ready. Roll. Okay. Ready? So now we're going to get these into our steamer basket. And now that you're all steamy, I'm all steamy. <laughs> we're all we're steamed steamy. Up. And we don't do anything else to these. There's no oil or salt or anything. They just go right in with the flesh side down. Yes. Correct. Okay. The center of the earth, yeah. if you will. Wow, I made a bigger steamer and I'm still like having a little bit of a hard time fitting these big old artichokes in here. So hopefully this is going to steam up okay. Let's hope. 
it'll be great. So I'm going to cover mine with foil just because I've got a metal colander that I'm using to steam these in and the handles hang over the sides. So I can't get a tight seal with just my lid. So I'm using some tin foil to seal in as much steam as possible. So I'm going to put my tin lid on now. I've got a tin basket. You've got a tin lid. And then I have a real lid uh, made for the pan lid. Made for the pan lid. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not (laughs) real. All these lids are real. (laughs) But yes, yes, that has to stay sealed that right. all of that steam can just soften the artichoke all yes, over? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And how long do we steam it for? We're going to let this go for about 30 minutes before we test it. I don't think they'd be done any sooner than that because, as we mentioned before, pretty fibrous. So it takes a little time to get those to loosen up and become meshy mm-hmm. is the word ready I'm going to party. use. Yeah, ready to party with some butter. We're going to let this steam for 30 minutes. We're going to check it. If, it's e- if we can pierce it easily with a regular table fork, we'll take them out. If not, we'll let them go a little longer and we'll work on making some butter. Some flavor okay, butter. sounds delicious. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So we will be future people in 30 minutes when you hear from us again. No, because we're going to go talk oh, about Oh, we're going to go sit down and talk about the <laughs> stuff. What am I thinking about? Okay, let's do that. I'm excited. Let's do that. Let's totally yeah. that. Yeah. All I right, like, so done. let's <laughs> cover, cover these babies and get back to it. Okay, <laughs> so we are back. Our artichokes are steaming, and we are going to talk a little bit from Marcella. Oh, Marcella, you know how much Marcella. we love Marcella. Marcella Hazan. We're returning to her Ingrediente book, which was her thoughts on farmers markets and vegetables in general. And so we just loved what she had to say from her book, or I did. I've read it through all the way. Gretchen's read it through mostly, but we're we always hope to surprise Gretchen a little bit with these readings, especially with Marcella, because she's so funny. Mm-hmm. But here we go. From Ingrediente. This is actually the very first vegetable in her book. I think it's alphabetical, <laughs> so it makes sense. But yep. <laughs> first place. So <laughs> here she says, I have never boiled an artichoke. There are cooks, I understand, who have never made artichokes any other way. What a pity. Artichokes possess more fascinating ways to please than almost any other vegetable. Just on their own, they can be sautéed, braised, fried, or grilled. They can be delicious, sliced very thin, and eaten raw with lemon juice and olive oil. They can be used in a risotto, a frittata, a soup, terrific lasagna, a rustic torta, a gratin, a stew. Cooking them is not at all complicated. Prepping them, however, is an indisputable exercise in patience, particularly so with the small ones. Okay, can can we stop and have like a major discussion for like two minutes? Yes, major discussion quick. (laughs) Two two minute discussions. Here we go. We have, I've never boiled a nerd choke either, unless I was cooking little guys. That's the only time I would ever do that if you're doing a lot of them. Because it's too much work for the little ones. To get into them otherwise, it's not worth it. They just cook well in boiling water. I guess I've never really tried to cook them by steaming them. It just seems like it would be difficult. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I'm also really intrigued by if slicing it very thin and eating it raw. I feel like I'm gonna have to do that soon. I'm so intrigued too. I want to know how do you slice it and do you still just eat the leaf base or I'm yeah, it's very curious. Her description of how to prepare them, I think it pulls all the leaves off, although she's doing it by hand. So dear God, please no. But <laughs> so the the way she's she describes how she does does her artichokes, which we are actually going to cut out of our discussion yeah. today, just because we like we just talked over how to do this. So she's leaving the most of that the choke part on the actual plant as possible. Mm -hmm. when you do it by hand, there is a reason to sometimes pull them off by hand because you can leave more of the fleshy parts of those bracts Mm -hmm. is what they're called. The, the, not Mm -hmm. the leaves because they're actually, they're like the outer part of the flower. She's removing all of that. She's probably also scraping out the, the choke entirely. Her artichokes for that would look more like the canned artichoke, like a true canned artichoke or an artichoke heart. I don't know if you've okay. ever 
sought those out specifically. You can find them usually more in the freezer section or like they're called like artichoke bottoms. They're really good. Mm-hmm. Lots of body parts today. I know. I was just thinking boobs and bottoms. We're boobs just, and bottoms. We're all over it today. Yeah. Well, and the, the artichoke, the, what I would call the top is the bottom of the artichoke, right? That pointy part at the top. No, that's the, the top. Oh, that is always the top. Okay. I thought you said bottom earlier when we were cutting it. <laughs> now I was thinking yeah. bottoms already. I hope I'm not confusing you. Oh, no, it's okay. It's not relevant anyway to the convo. But I think I'm just a little confused about the artichoke structure. I don't want to like interrupt and to super sidetrack, but real quick, because you told me the artichoke is the flower of this plant. Correct. The leaf bits, which are actually flower leaves, at the very bottom of them, closest to the stem, it's the softest part that you can eat. But Correct. at a certain point of that leaf, it's it's inedible. It's just the armor, like you said earlier. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when Marcella is preparing her artichokes in this scenario, what she's doing is snapping off the armor part and leaving the soft edible part on Correct. it. Correct. Yes. And then once you've done that, you've taken off the armor bits, what's left, if you've cut off the stem and you've taken off the armor bits, what's left is what we see as just the artichoke heart. It's the heart and sometimes referred to as artichoke bottoms. Bottoms. For the most part, when you see artichoke hearts in the store, they have some amount of leaf attached to them. And they're usually like an inner softer leaf that is much more edible. Artichoke bottoms are like just the part with no leaves at all. Oh, like the closest point to the base. Stem. Without that, to the stem, without the fibery, wispy bits in there. Yeah. That little bundle cup. bulb yeah cup, is the heart yeah the bottom the bottom yes yes okay the weight of the heart is to the bottom anyway right <laughs> <laughs> sorry that really tickled me squeeze those cheeks no okay let's squeeze keep up. moving yeah yep let's go all right next paragraph okay our quick two minute sidetrack we're right Right back at it here. Okay. <laughs> back to Marcello's ingrediente thoughts. There are two basic varieties of artichokes grown for the American market. One of these, the globe, which is what we're using today, is round in shape as its name suggests. The leaves, which have a small indentation at their tip, curl lightly inward. They are almost always available, but their ideal season is from very late winter to early summer. We are right in there. The globe resembles the Italian artichoke known as Mamamola in Rome, where it is often served a la Giudia. Yeah, that's probably pretty close. I'm pretty sure G-I is G, and you you would pronounce the Giudia. Yeah, Giudia would be my best guess. Where it is often served a la Giudia, flattened, fried to a crisp, its leaves curling in imitation of a chrysanthemum, which sounds delicious, too. When you fry artichokes, they do, like, the leaves will just, like, curl up and they look really pretty. They get this, like, golden brown hue. Like, fried artichokes are so gorgeous. I grew up on boiled, or not boiled, sorry, seamed artichokes. That is what I have always, I always had as a child. Having them fried and stuff in culinary school was like, oh. <laughs> Up and, level. <laughs> and then in the early 2000s, which I'm sure it's just, it, it became a lot more popular to grill artichokes. So that was a huge movement in like the early to mid 2000s. I mean, you probably see, you see that everywhere now. The Rutherford Grill here in Napa Valley is known for their grilled artichokes. So people have been branching out with the artichokes in, in the U.S. quite a bit. But um, they are, it is interesting to see them fried and just like how beautiful they are when you fry them Mm -hmm. there's something pretty cool about seeing them in that original shape kind of where you get that sense of the full beauty of the flower I guess if you will yes I think I agree that's exactly right I also want to try them in a lasagna like she mentioned in the previous paragraph that sounds really intriguing to me 
I've definitely done that. I've definitely you put have. artichokes in our in lasagna. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of veggies. I've done I've done like sure. every veggie in a <laughs> yeah, yeah, the line. <laughs> if it's a vegetable, I put it in a lasagna, probably. <laughs> she just baked it in pasta. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep moving. The other variety is smaller than the globe. Its leaves, which are often purplish, lean slightly outward with a thorn at their tip. Their flavor is more intensely artichokey than that of the mild-mannered globe. <laughs> love artichokey. <laughs> love mild-mannered, too. I love the assignment of personalities to the vegetables here. <laughs> the mild-mannered globe. Mild-mannered globe. I've never done a side-by-side tasting of different varieties of artichoke. I guess I need to make that my new life goal to have a full selection of various artichokes and taste them all at the same time. Yeah. Tell me if the smaller ones are more intensely artichokey. This is like the when we learned there were different caper sizes and that the smaller you go, the stronger the flavor. So that makes sense too, that the smaller artichoke would have a more artichokey flavor. It makes sense. Makes sense. Small artichokes, whose growers describe them as babies, have made a welcome entry into the market. They come from the same plant as the larger ones, but they are clipped from a lower section. They don't have a fuzzy choke at their heart, and they have a fine taste, but they require at least as much patience to prep thoroughly as the larger ones. (laughs) Yeah. That's nice. It doesn't have that little fuzzy stuff though it well it depends on how early you get them because they the the choke does start to develop quite early you sometimes do have to scoop out a little bit of a fuzzy heart but it just depends on how small they are like if you're taking itty itty bitty baby ones yeah they have no no hearts to speak of okay (laughs) they're heartless It's better. It's a cruel world. You don't need it. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Continuing on here, we skipped over a little bit because Marcella went, goes through the descriptions of, we'll get to that in a second, but we are going to skip through a part where she goes through the descriptions of how to peel off those armory bits. We're jumping over that because we're not doing that today. We're leaving ours whole. But when you are about to buy artichokes, look them over carefully to be sure they are fresh and worth the effort you'll be putting into preparing them. Bend back a leaf, which should snap, not fold over limply. Check the bottom end of the stem where it has been cut. It should still be green and possibly dewy, at least in part. If it is dark or even black and lifeless, it was cut from the plant too long ago. Keep fresh artichokes for up to a week in the refrigerator, stowed in a large, open, plastic bag. Baby artichokes are usually sold in a plastic box in which you can refrigerate them for about a week. I've never seen baby artichokes that weren't prepared. I don't know where Marcella is shopping, but lucky bitch. (laughs) Yeah, really. I would have been so excited about some baby artichokes when I was younger. (laughs) I know. Well, you'll have to keep an eye out at the farmer's market. Maybe it's like a rare thing. We do have a lot of artichokes. Well, a lot of people sell artichokes here because it's California. We can grow artichokes like nobody's business. <laughs> Literally. Right. 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 <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I was listening Monopoly. to the Saver podcast about artichokes that they did in December of 2022. And 100% of the U.S. or almost 100% of the U.S. artichokes come from California. We need California to stay okay because we need artichokes and we need avocados and we need lettuce. We need it all to come from there. But that, I mean, that surprises me, but it doesn't surprise me about it, it all really. coming from California. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, 100% was way more than I thought, but mm-hmm. it, it's true. I just don't, I don't know how they do anywhere that freezes sure. because they do great in California. But I don't know that they do particularly well anywhere that gets real cold. What about really hot? See, I think Can that's they also, they they pretty much, like right now, mine are in beautiful shape. They are 
the, but they pretty much are done because they start to bloom pretty early and they'll dry out by July. Like the whole plant dries out. And mm-hmm. I discovered that the hummingbirds in particular really love the blossoms and the bees too. So it attracts a lot of good things to my yard, which makes it hard for me to harvest those sometimes because I'm like, I want to see all the bees. But the good news is, is I have the possibly older relative of the artichoke also planted in my yard and the bees and the hummingbirds feel the same way about those, which are called cartoon cartoons. <laughs> cardoons. <laughs> they are C-R-D-O-O-N-S. Cardoon. They are similar. Like it has just a smaller flower, but it looks exactly the same. Hmm. So you can leave the cardoons for the in. animals and you get the artichokes then. Yes. yes. I hope. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Oh, yeah, I know. I hope so. You need all the artichokes you can get. Okay, let's keep going with Marcella. She says, when you are ready to prep them, set the following equipment out on your counter. A half lemon, a bowl of water into which you've squeezed the other half of the lemon, a sharp chef's knife, a paring knife or grapefruit spoon, a vegetable peeler with a swiveling blade, sometimes called a Y peeler, and a large empty bowl or trash can for the discards. If you are making artichokes Roman style, in which the full stem remains attached to the bulb, leave the stem on. For other preparations, detach it, but do not discard it, because it is very good to eat. Cut off a quarter inch disc from the stem's bottom. A dark green layer sheathes the stem's pale core. The core is tender and delectable, but the outer dark green layer is rough and stringy and must be stripped completely away with the paring knife or vegetable peeler. Drop the trimmed bulb and stem in the bowl of lemony water and continue until you have prepped all your artichokes. Keep large trimmed artichokes in the water up to a few hours before you cook them. If you are working with baby artichokes, you can keep them for at least a week in the refrigerator. Pack them as close as possible in a glass jar with a squeezed lemon and fill the jar to overflowing with lemony water. Screw the cap on tightly. And the last note here is Victor's note. In the last week of her life, Marcella prepared an entire box of baby artichokes. They're in the refrigerator in a glass jar where they are to remain. My heart breaks. (laughs) Victor and Marcella, a love story. I want a Victor. I just want a Victor. I know, you need a Victor. Doesn't even have to be a Victor. Could be a Victoria. Your Victor, your Victoria, your Vic. Yeah, Vic. (laughs) Well, a lot going on there. That's, that's a, that's pretty much what we did. We kept on... A little bit of the stem, but not really. And then um, we used the lemon, like you suggested, to keep it from darkening or anything. But otherwise, well done, Gretchen. You're right aligned with Marcella. Thank God. I didn't Thank know. Phew. Maybe I, no, I can't be. When did Marcella pass away? 2013. It's like, maybe I'm Marcella reincarnated. Yeah. Eh, overlap a little but no, <laughs> you got no, to cross a little, with a little <laughs> too much yeah a little too much overlap to think that we have approximately two minutes left before our artichoke we're supposed to check our artichokes so is there anything else you really want to say or should we just close it out there i mean most of what i can i i, I can tell you a little bit more about the plant structure if you feel like it We can also talk about what it's related to, which I did find pretty interesting. Some of it, which I already knew, and some of it that's like, oh, I had to, like, there was a new connection that I made that on the relative front. And I have a little snippet of history, too, just because I wasn't sure if Marcella was going to get into any of that, but apparently no, and not at all. So, 
but we could also walk out there, check our artichoke, see where we're at, and I can talk about that. Well, do you want to just go check real quick, and we can get a sense of like they're done or they're not, and then we can right either yeah sit or okay, so we'll go do that real yeah. quick. Yeah, we'll just all go. right. So uh, I'm just gonna leave my computer here. Woo. Okay, I drank my lemon drop a little too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I am very very tipsy. Okay. <laughs> Steaming away. Ooh, these are steamy. Yeah, so pretty. Yeah, I need to make sure I check my water level oh, too, because if they're done, they look like they're probably done actually. Oh, there's the timer. Nice timing. So where does the fork go to check it? You have to put it into the heart. Flip it around a oh, little bit. Oh, oh yeah. Mine are. Oh, the stem is quite done. I flip these over just so that we can cook from a slightly different direction. So the stem is very, very done. My, on mine. Mine's still hard a little. Mine are pretty soft. There's a little bit of resistance when I go into the heart heart. So uh -huh. I'm thinking maybe a few more minutes, maybe another 10. Yeah, I think I need at least 10. I'm gonna put, How, can I put a little more water in there? Yes. Just as long as, you know, you're not covering them. As long as it's yeah. below them, it's totally sure. fine. Okay. I'm going to put the stems upward just to see if that'll do anything. <laughs> may not do a damn thing at all oh and like you can also test by pulling the leaves off because like once they start to come off that's usually a pretty good indicator i turned yeah. it up a teeny bit too just because of the more water oh right yeah yeah then... so we'll we'll wait until yours gets back to boiling and we'll go from there okay. yeah because i think mm -hmm. mine are close enough where if i turn it off and just let them steam in the pot you know the pot will retain enough heat it yeah can... Take them a little bit further, but not continue to apply crazy amounts of heat. Okay, we're going to let my water boil and Gretchen's artichokes just sit while we continue to talk about all things artichokes. Where do you want me to start? What the plant itself is, what its history is. Let's start with history. From what we've gathered at this point in time, it is likely that the cardoon is the plant that we selectively bred in order to create what we know today as the artichoke, picking the ones that had the biggest heads and reproducing those. Mm -hmm. And so then that's how we got the globe artichoke. But it seems to have taken place possibly in Moorish Spain, but even the heads of the cardoons are edible. It's just how much time and energy do you want to spend on this? Because they're real tiny. I did one year prep a bunch of them. But they do have a much harder bract on them than an artichoke of the same size. Artichoke leaves are more tender than cardoon leaves. So even once I peeled them, they like still had like really tough fibers to them. So I'm not sure that I would necessarily think that they're like a great vegetable, unfortunately. They look like an artichoke? Yeah, just tiny. Like kind of, tiny, tiny. they maybe max out at about two to three inches across. Mm, okay. Once they're fully bloomed out, if I'm remembering correctly, <laughs> my own plants that I've had basically since I moved into this house. I can't remember how big the flowers are. I just remember the ones that I prepped ended up being like an, like inch, an inch across. Or something. Yeah. And it was so much work. I was like, fuck, I need to be desperate. This is a desperation food only. Hmm. I was really hopeful because I love artichokes so much, but... Not so much on the cardoon. Yes, but you can actually eat the leaf, and the stem of the leaf is what most people today eat from the cardoon. So cardoons are the grandparents of our artichokes. Parent, some, Parent, some, some yeah, parents. previous uh, relative. Okay, so what family is that in, the cardoon and the choke? So they are, they are a thistle. So if you've ever seen a thistle... They look like a fucking thistle, just huge. Yeah. Yeah. Bar, like, pick, like, all the leaves are a bit prickly. Not quite as prickly as some thistles. They're, they're nasty fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> talk about but, armor. Talk about fucking armor, yeah. But, so they're also related to lettuce, because that's also in the same family. Dandelions, also in the same family. And I had not put together that salsify is also in that family as well as sunflowers and 
Jerusalem artichoke is somehow related vaguely. Huh. But that wow. doesn't surprise me. Because the first time I ate salsify, I thought, this tastes like a fucking artichoke. Mm. It's so good. I've never again been able to like, like it's not widely grown or produced in the U.S. So I don't, like I've never had the same experience with it. I don't know why, but. Mm. Where is an asparagus in this world? Uh, so asparagus in this world, it's way the fuck over there. <laughs> I'm not sure I know very much about what asparagus is related to. It's more like a bamboo or a grass almost. It's not in a grass family. It's something else entirely. I wasn't prepared to talk about asparagus today. Well, you don't have to. I was just thinking about the tip of the asparagus looking kind of like a little teeny artichoke and then the base being kind of tough and just wondering if it connects it at all or not. I don't think so. Hmm. That is an intriguing comparison because you're right. It does like have a very artichokey looking end. I don't, I don't think there's a family connection there. I will have to look into that. But anyway, artichokes are the point here. The surprise for me was I was listening to the Saber pod and (laughs) they were talking about how they're also related to sunflowers and it just clicked. I was like, oh my God, the flower is so much like a sunflower because you have like these thick outer leaves that are green, but a sunflower has more like a traditional petal, whereas thistles, they don't ha- really have petals. They have like bulbs. And then yeah, like it's like... Thindly things. <laughs> it just has the bracts, which are those thick green things. And then Mm -hmm. the part in the middle, which is sort of like, it is the petals, but also the stamens and the pistils. And like, it's like all the parts into one. When the seeds ripen, it looks exactly like a sunflower, but it has a little poofy top. So they're carried by the wind, kind of similar to a dandelion seed. Mm Mm-hmm. My neighbors are probably all growing cardoons at this point because the bunnies really <laughs> like to eat the flower heads, but they uh-huh. don't eat the seeds and the seeds will like explode out of the head at a certain point. So I've got them all over my yard. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure that all my neighbors are also growing them. <laughs> That's so funny, but also interesting to think about the dandelion because I was thinking about a dandelion when we were scooping out the little fibrous center because it does kind of have that dandelion wispiness to it in the middle there and it when they poof out they look exactly like when an individual little dandelion seed but the seed's a lot bigger it's mm-hmm. probably it's more close it's closer in size to a sunflower seed we have 54 seconds but then the, you have directly attached to it without a stem in between is that fluffy part that's at the top, like that has a little bit of a stem that connects it to the seed of the dandelion. Am I making sense? Does that make sense? I think so. I'm just a little lost because I'm not paying as much attention as I probably should be. So it's not you, it's me. But also it is really <laughs> it's cool. Weed. Just, it's weed. <laughs> it's weed. But it is also just interesting to it, just interesting to think about how I wouldn't have connected lettuce until you said it. But then I can see the same kind of shape and the base and all of the that flower is a lot softer yeah the flowers look like yeah very and the seeds are on at least some lettuces are like that exactly where the like oops, there it goes. time to check our artichokes i guess <laughs> yes it's time to check our artichokes i also felt really stupid for like it is this like weird hybrid of like dandelions this little thing but also a sunflower so fascinating because they do get really tall when they bloom. They get like six feet tall. That's nuts too. They're yeah. so little. The artichoke, man. Pretty amazing. Artichokes, man. It's Artichokes. wild. <laughs> Artichokes, man. They're wild. They're groovy. Let's go check them. Let's, let's go, go check. check these little flowers. I think I've done the most description I want to do. So let's move on to making some flavored butter at least. To the, even if our artichokes are not 100% there. Well, they smell good. Okay. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yes. Those leaves pull right off. 
Mine are done. And I'm going to let them sit open. Okay, mine's not done just yet. It's a little tough on the stem and in the middle. So I'm okay. going to put my lid back on. So I'm wondering if maybe the steamer or the foil crafted steamer basket is not allowing enough steam to get to yeah. them. Yeah, we also didn't talk about my basket, but. Oh, yeah. Well, we can talk about it now since apparently yeah. we have time and I <laughs> we can work on our butter and talk about that at the same time. Becca's got a little more time on her artichokes, mm-hmm. but we're going to work on making some butter and maybe talk a little bit about butter. <laughs> love butter. Butter love. More butter love. I... How much butter are we Sorry. talking about here? I probably would do, <laughs> I'd do a stick. A whole stick, okay. Because I love butter. And I'm going to press two cloves of garlic into that. I'm getting some more garlic oh. out. I thought I had it. I just shot some across my kitchen. That like garject really did its job. So you're doing it in the microwave? Oh, I'm doing mine on the stove top. Are oh, you doing it in the stove top? I see. You can do it in the microwave. I don't mm-hmm. care. Mm-hmm. I just like to watch my garlic cook, I think. So I'm always <laughs> wanting to do that on the stove top. Mm-hmm. Have you ever put Old Bay in your butter? Sauce? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Yum. Not for artichokes necessarily, but yes, like for crab and everything. Yeah, we we like Old Bay here. Oh, same. My first kitchen job, they had some Old Bay aioli that they made. <laughs> old Bay aioli. Old Bay aioli. Oh, that is a missed opportunity. <laughs> oh rookie. man, rookie mistake, <laughs> sweet Lorraine's. <laughs> By the way, Lorraine was not sweet, apparently. I did not interact with her enough to have an opinion, but I have heard that Lorraine was not sweet. <laughs> Where I've also, I also heard somebody describe truffle oil as, well, they had a problem with the fact that she described it as smelling like sex. And then they said, what kind of funky sex is she having? I was what like, a work conversation. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> restaurant I, I think that actually that person's name was victoria and oh, that's funny <laughs> so once your butter's done i mean you'll be ready to taste Eat. right yeah so you don't have to wait for me oh i won't i'm sorry i know <laughs> not an option wasn't playing i'm sorry <laughs> but not that sorry <laughs> not when it comes to artichokes sorry but yeah no I'm not sorry. I am actually not sorry. I No, that's fair. Time to taste. Yeah, mine, Becca's, are still being stubborn, so they're still steaming, but Gretchen has her butter ready to go and her choke's ready to go, and there's no stopping her at this point. Yeah, I dare you to try. <laughs> Don't get in her way. <laughs> so oh, what no. did you end up putting in your butter sauce? Not enough. I need more salt. Okay. I may... And maybe more garlic? At least more salt. Hold on. Salt my artichokes. Hold on, hold on. If I salt them now, they're still sitting in the steamer. I actually just pulled a leaf off and it was still kind of firm on the edges. I'm worried that mine aren't actually done all the way through. I'm sort of noticing that some of the leaves look a little more white than translucent. Oh, that one was okay. Let's see. I added more. I added salt to the artichokes themselves, too. And added more salt to the butter, since it is unexpectedly unsalted. Oh, bummer. Oh, so your butter, so your butter has salt and garlic only, and timid peppercorns. Oh, that's right. And timid peppercorns, naturally. <laughs> of course. Taste test number two. <laughs> okay. Let's try it again. I think this butter needs something though. It's missing. It's missing something. Lemon? Maybe. Probably should have done lemon zest, but oh well. Too late. (laughs) I do think I could go with more garlic too, so I'm not sure if I should or not. Maybe I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check mine again. Okay. I'm gonna turn my butter back on because I think maybe I just want a little more of a toast on my garlic. Mm -hmm. 
also maybe some benefit to heating the butter while the timid peppercorns are in there. I think mine are done. Yay! Yeah, yay. So I'll turn off the heat. I am gonna heat my butter in the microwave, so I'm going to do that right now. All right. But you're not gonna spend 20 minutes evolving your butter like I am? <laughs> nope. <laughs> microwave, sliced garlic, salt, pepper. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's better. And get a little browning around the edges. Got my Maillard reaction on. Mmm. Maillard it up. Actually, I can't remember if this would be Maillard or caramelization because it should be more Maillard for the protein. Okay, I'm going to taste my butter. All right. Oh, yum. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. My, mine needed, I needed to cook it longer. Way better flavor. Oh, good. Plus I oh, added delicious. a little lemon zest. So. Okay. So it came together. Came together. Really mm. nice. And the artichoke texture is good and. Yeah, I don't know. They're mm. a little, a little stiff, unfortunately. Mm. There's some parts where they don't look quite cooked. I think it's fine. You'll still eat it. Oh yeah, they're they're gonna get eaten. <laughs> no if I problem. if I reheat them, they might finish cooking. Sure. Okay. So yeah, let's say like we couldn't eat these right now. What would I do? Just let them keep sitting here for a little bit. That's okay. Yep. Can you overcook them? Oh yeah, but I mean, it'll take that, a while. That then you can just smash them up and turn them into you know dip or something if you want. Mm -hmm. So. Sure. There's uses for them, even if they're overcooked. Mm -hmm. But, well, yeah. cheers. Cheers. We clink our armored leaves together. Our armored leaves together. <laughs> Ta-da, right, clink, 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 clink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an adventure. Thank you for teaching me all of that about artichokes. I will not be as intimidated next time I think about cooking these guys. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not it's not that hard. Just mm -hmm. takes a minute. We'll have to get mm -hmm. you a proper steamer basket, but mm -hmm. or I'll send you one of mine since I have like seven. So mm -hmm. bring it when I come. Oh. Okay, next time. I don't know if we officially said, but what I ended up doing was making a little foil basket and poking a bunch of holes in it for my artichokes to sit in because mm -hmm. I didn't have a steamer option that was going to work or make sense for this. So it, you can make it work. You can steam an artichoke without a steamer just like this. So always a way around it. <laughs> yes. Hopefully we can supply some pictures for you. Yes. I will. Yes. I will try to remember to take pictures of the basket before I eat all of this and then go, I got to clean everything up. Everything is such a mess, which is usually right? how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, this is how life is it's making oh. a mess and cleaning it up, making a mess and cleaning it up. <laughs> Hopefully the food's good in between, but exactly this time, <laughs> this time mission accomplished. Well done. Thank you again, Gretchen. And I'm not as cranky as I was earlier. Me too. Sometimes but, food uh, helps. <laughs> sometimes food helps, yes. On that note, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> uh, it's Check an armored vegetable. vegetable. <laughs> armored vegetables. Find us on Instagram. Find us on Facebook. Check out highgluttony.com at your own risk. And until then, off we go. Here we go. Okay, that's well, enough. Peanuts are so crisp. Yeah. <laughs> crisp so oh no no. Stop. Yeah. I